My name is Jacob Lawrence Jaya. I'm a Sierra Leonean photographer based in Freetown. Okay, um, so like I'll, I'll be showing you some of my workflow today, how I edit my portraits. Um, before um, I get to go into the, the editing room, I just have to say, um, I want you guys to follow me on Instagram. That is at J underscore photography as in pho2 as in number okay same as um same also on facebook okay so um this image from this my drive here i'm oh, sorry i have an image here that i'll be editing so let's just say okay i've edited this one I've done this one okay let's just say I'll be editing this picture and I'm just making a portrait of it so I want us to just take a moment and go straight into the editing okay, so I'm um, actually had to open my light room because that is where I edit my raw pictures first before I take them to Photoshop so if you are in Lightroom or if you are a Lightroom user I actually just drag and drop my photos my pictures in my library uh, window i just don't have to go through to put to import and follow all those long process and, and stuff so i just have to go to put my file where it is then i drag it and drop it in the lightroom library window okay so now with the image selected randomly this one this is the only one i selected as you can see all the other images are not selected because I only drag one image and this is the image. Okay, let me just open it wide so you can see. Okay, so that is the only image that I I I I I, I chose. Okay, so I'm using this one now. So I come to import. Okay, the image is importing now. You wait for it, then we start doing the editing okay now since the image has been imported into lightroom all you have to do is to come to the development and uh, win uh, module there the image is not rotated properly so what you do is that you right click on the image and rotate left that will bring the image back to the normal position how it was okay so for this image i'll be cropping this um uh, image so that it can just be here where the lab starts oh, okay so i first of all crop my image first uh five by seven most times uh, i don't know why but some people do crop their images for instagram but mostly i crop my images five by seven after that i adjust the, the size that i want by five by seven then i can go now for the instagram uh crop then that is it okay so this is how I want the image to be, but I think I have to go again and bring it more a bit down so that the head can just be on level terms with this edge. Okay, quick, we hit okay. You see, you know, also cropping also helps to bring the image to uh, to life. You know, if you don't want all those other extra areas to show the image. Uh, in, in the image you just have to copy it especially for those that do portrait photography they do copy their images most times so uh we just did you can see we just did copy this entire image into an instagram crop okay so that is it so now what i do mostly i i created my own workflow as you can see these are my presets okay these are my these are my my presets that i created these are all the uh, various it's like this one I call this one fine. This one is fine. This one is J nice. As you can see, this one is pop. This is my till uh, one. This is my till two. And this is the untitled preset that I just created. I think most times when I do these things, I edit them when it's night, when everybody is sleeping. So I just do it, and I don't want to forget this color setting. So I just name and put it on title preset mostly. That is the first the default and uh, naming and uh, convention. But when I have to go over it again in the morning, when I'm fully okay, you know that person that is working overnight tiredly, tirelessly and stuff. So that is it. 
so these are the three but for this one i'm going with fine fine is best fine works best for me because fine pops the background very well for me even with the light here on the arm it pops everything up and everything just skin tones everything is just okay that's why i choose to do my um to use the fine preset that i created for myself but also j nice can also go with it but j nice you notice one thing if i use j nice it will kill the uh, the backlight there the back that you can see you see it will kill kill most of it but fine fine actually maintains some of the backlight so i'm using fine now fine is here you see the image is already having some color let's just see the before and after you see now we have some life in the picture okay we have some colors skin has been very well okay and so we just have to make some some, some adjustments now then we continue okay so i'm going back to normal okay so i normally leave my 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 things in to a default value but mostly if i want the image to be a little bit reddish i just have to drag my things to the positive end to be like two okay for most like to work on. for my picture style i should stand up okay so i'm going now to adjust the, the highlights and shadows i'm just going to adjust them because this one here works for most portraits yeah for my for most of my portraits i'm using fine to adjust the lighting after that i just have to do the basic adjustments and, and see how you can just adjust your image to look good for you okay for my vibrance mostly i say uh, vibrance affects the background of the of the subject mostly it does not affect too much of the skin on of the subject but mostly affects the background and the areas that are very not too far for that are far from the subject so if you if you increase the vibrance you notice that it affects the background more okay so i push up the bar the vibrance a little bit so that my yellow can pop and i push a little bit up for the saturation also to pop the image let's just watch the image now the before and after okay this is the before and this is the after all right so now that this image is like this i don't touch any other thing i have to kill the orange a little bit because the skin tones are mostly orange and red okay so i have to kill it a little bit i don't want it to become too over saturated and the yellow as you can see i've not even touched the yellow i told you the vibrance affects the background in most cases so i did not bother to increase the yellow uh, the green is default the cyan is default the blue everything you are seeing now is default even the magenta everything is default okay it's only the red that is up a little bit just plus four some can even be um plus three depending on what your subject and color color uh, color tone is on the normal the default i mean the original picture okay all those settings are the same for the sharpening i do sharpen the image a little bit in lightroom and give you some some detail every other thing i just leave as it is okay so now that the image is like this i'm heading now straight to photoshop you right click on the image and go to edit in i'm using photoshop 2018 okay you click photoshop 2018 or whatever your own photoshop version is wait for it to load okay now what we are going to do we will be retouching this image to bring more more fun to the world of photography okay we're going to retouch this image and you will be amazed okay so what i do mostly i come to this retouching academy that i have installed if you don't have retouching academy you can download it i think some people do sell it and some are giving it free i i will see if i have it in one of these groups that i'm in so i'll forward it as well i have it for windows and i have it for mac okay so my images are 16 bits why 16 bits because 16 bit images are more that they carry more quality than that two that 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 than 8 bit images i normally go with 16 bits as you, you can change that in lightroom and even change it also in photoshop so from lightroom my image is 16 bits so I'm just using the 16 bits for this equation. I pick that one. And most times, when my image is, is too sharp, I use the radius value of 3.5. Okay? So, 
okay then now I'm gonna take the, I'm going to take the mixer brush from a brush panel and start mixing please be patient with me as I do this to utilize the workflow okay don't as you mix please do not uh, uh, mix in areas that have shadows and bring into the highlights maintain the highlights separately and the shadows separately so your image can have this this good feel okay just do it steadily you don't want to mix and kill all the details of the skin so you have to mix very gently and with confidence okay for the sake of time we have to do this I have to fast forward this video for for a faster workflow Okay guys, so like um, this is how far we've come after mixing, we've mixed uh, the entire image. So that will be work. We are actually working on the low layer. So now what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the, the clone stamp tool here, clone stamp tool, and work on the high frequency texture layer so that we can pull the imperfections on the skin, like the blemishes. Okay, all you have to do is a sample. To sample, you have to hold Alt option on your keyboard and sample from a layer that has no spots and just bring it to area that has spots you see that is so simple yes so now you're just taking away the the spots okay so for the sake of time we're going to follow this area also to be done you have done working on the high layer by removing the blemishes so now I'm going to match and group all these layers into one and match the group to be one image so now this is it we worked on this layer what I do most time mostly what I do to to work on my background to look more unique I just have to duplicate the, the layer that I just worked on and I use my lasso tool to select the subject. Okay. I select the subject. You don't have to. Do, you don't have to go close to it. Okay. After selection, you come to edit, fill. You select this one. Usually, it has to be foreground. But when you come, you click content aware. Okay, leave everything as it is. Normal color adaptation, leave it as checked. Do not check and uh, preserve transparency. Leave capacity at 100. Okay, 
this after clicking ok this, this one is going to take some time so for the sake of time we have to fast forward the video as well okay so after uh, the the fill cotton area has been done this is what the image bring to you so all you have to do is to hold command d and uncheck the areas that we are there basically what this is what i'm going to do we are only working on the background not the subject when you hide this background the subject is there but this one is what we are going to work on this is the background so i want this background to be very unique i want it to be very uniform because some areas are rough as you can see some areas are really really rough so what i'm going to do what, what we will do is to actually go to filter come to blur gaussian blur gaussian blur you have to increase the radius of the gaussian blur until you start seeing the uh, background looks somewhat blurry but everything is uniform and actually don't have to see those rough roughness and any other thing that can be distracting on the background okay this one is okay for me so i will leave it at 182.4 pixels and i hit okay okay now the background is like this very unique all you have to do is to bring back the normal brush tool leave the opacity at 100 fill at 100 and just hold alt or option on the mac and hit the layer mask okay all you have to do is to zoom in the image and increase your brush size and paint over to reveal the background that you just worked for work, worked on please do not paint over the image because if you paint over the image so this will happen to your image so please do not paint over the image okay just paint around the image the edges so that you can iron the background very well you can straighten the background very well so we have to do this very fast That is how I work on my background. Okay, it takes some time, but honestly, trust me, it works. It okay, as long as you have time, you have patience, you can do these things. So all I have to do again is to I like all these two layers: the one for the background and the one with the subject, match as one layer. Okay, be fine. So after all those uh, are just done. I have to actually go to my adjustment layer and choose curves adjustment. Drag this all the way to a value that I want. Let me show you the values. This is I use sometimes I use different numbers. I don't have a, a specific number because the images most times it varies. I just want to pop the image to at least have some amount of contrast. This one is nice, so I'm using this one to use light on the image so that it can be equalized. Okay, you might you don't want to do it too much because if you do it too much, you will end up destroying the image. Just want to have that shiny look on the image. I drag that up a little bit also. I'm still keen about this one, this contrast that it comes down. You have to do it based on your 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 edit your feel, what you what you are seeing, how you like it. But I, these are these, these are the, these are most of my steps that I use to retouch my images. Okay, then I also again have to do the same thing because I just made this time around. I want to expose some dark areas that are too dark just to bring to equalize it with the areas that are bright. Or areas that are bright to bring it back to the to, to, to make it uniform to areas that are white and that are dark so that they can be uniform. So I have to just bring this guy down a little bit. 
like that a little bit not too much not too high not too low and i also have to give some contrast also to make it look good okay then this one five will do then with this one you don't want to leave it like that because you only need that those uh white areas or the areas that are having highlights to be equal with areas that are having shadows so that you can they can be a little bit uniform so i invert this layer using command i or control i on windows and i use my brush the foreground is it, 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 the background is black so i'm using a white foreground with a brush and i paint over to the area that are, that are too bright so that it can be a little bit minimized It's working. See? Okay, so I love curves. So I, most times I work with curves. It's what I that I work with most of the time. I think that is enough for the curves. And let me show you. Each of these curves adjustment layer have some impact on the subject. See this one. See this one. See this one. They all have the role they are playing. Don't just see them like that because. Some people might be wondering why is this guy just using curves, 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 curves. I'm using this to adjust my image, to adjust the lights on the image, to adjust the dark areas, to adjust the bright areas, all of those. Okay, so now that I've done that, I just have to go to my my actions and I choose white eye and teeth. I click that one. So you can see the background. It's black so I'm using a white brush to brighten the teeth and the eyes so because of this we have two areas that we will be working on the teeth and the eyes so I'm going to duplicate this layer that I just uh, actually this action that I just bring so I'm using command J or control J of Windows and use a white brush white normal brush to paint over the eyes
change this one to cooling filter 80 okay and increase the blue a little bit like 35 mean bright ominous mean dark okay so I think this is the image we are almost done just using this simple simple settings not much of action but look at it before look at the after okay so let me bring back my friend because <laughs> and light it up a little bit let's light it up okay that is it okay one thing one more last thing is the hue and saturation okay this background that you're seeing is yellow so i just want to select the the um i want to modify only the, the area that i want so i'm using this hand tool to pick a color and now i'm on yellow so i'm bringing this guy to the minus hue so that i can get some orange in the yellow as well and increase it a little bit and give it some lightness Okay, then for the reds that has to do with her skin tone, I increase it a little bit. For her blue jeans, I push the blue up a little bit, like plus seven or plus five, and like that, ten, whatever the case may be, in your own favor. our image eh? okay so now let's add sharpness to it so we go to the beauty which is academy and this is sharpen image now our image is sharp and everything so if you want you can reduce the opacity if you want you cannot remove reduce opacity depending on your own feel so what I do mostly, I don't want this here to be too shiny. It's got so much uh, artifacts when it's shared on social media sometimes. So I'm using my brush tool again. To increase the opacity this time and increase the brush size. Uh, size. And at the same time, just paint over to the on the layer mask. Paint black. You see, that's how it is. To adjust, to adjust, avoid this, this um shiny effects that it gives on images so i reduce the, the shiny effects as it gives on images so i'm just reducing i'm painting over i don't want sharpness on here at all i don't want it especially in the areas when the the hair is too too bright and has too much oil and when the light falls on it it becomes too shiny and when you add sharpness to it you see the image look like the 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 the, the, true, the true salt and sand of it <laughs> shining and glittering like that one so now with that you just have to reduce the opacity of the sharpness let's see 
I'm, I'm going with 60. 60 works for me. Yes. So, this is the before and this is the after. I click save. So, it will save here and appear in Lightroom. So, Lightroom now, I just have to export my image. Look at this. This is the one. See? It has created a duplicate, as you can see now. That is one to one. Okay, now this is the image. Can you see? This is the before. This is the before image. And this is the after. This is my own simple way of editing my pictures, specifically my studio pictures. Thank you very much. So now I have to export this picture. My export settings vary, so your own can also go. I have export settings for uh, for client to print the pictures. I have export settings for Facebook and Instagram, which is now currently here. I have export settings for website purpose, and I have my J original setting that came with Lightroom and I have the one that is going for quality and I have quality in general so it's quality and quality in general imagine eh? this one the image size will be like 50 megabytes this one the image size will be like 15 megabytes this one we are will be like 10 megabytes for website it has to be some has to be in kilobytes some one megabytes for Instagram and Facebook some will be six megabytes seven megabytes for client to print I have that value it is like um I think the last time I checked for this for the size of the picture depending on the picture also as well because we have full portraits and we have close up portraits the, 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 the sizes vary so I'm going now currently with the Facebook and Instagram uh, export I write my 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 watermark or my logo is on the left so I choose that you can choose yours at any position you want to put it thank you very much and it's done.